I'm Pink Nation here today, and today I'm going to be reviewing a theory that I have been reading for a year, and that I hold very close to my heart. A theory that was in serialization for about 15 years, and began in August of 2001, and ended in August of 2016, and due to its recent conclusion, I thought it would be time to give it some love and review it. I am, of course, talking about Bleach! Alrighty, guys, let's get started with the plot. Now, due to its extreme length, I'm going to be quite short with the plot. The story of Bleach is that a teenage boy named Ichio Kurosaki, who meets the girl named Rukia Kuki, who tells him she is a soul reaper. His family is attacked by a monster called a Hollow, and Rukia is injured in her battle with that Hollow. The only way to save his family is if Rukia Kuki gives him her soul reaper powers, which she does. Ichiro Kurosaki becomes a Soul Reaper, and the rest of the story is about his adventures as, as a Soul Reaper. So, let's start off simply with the structure of it. There is a substitute Shinigami arc about Ichigo Gate learning how to use his power, what it means to be a Soul Reaper, and just introducing some of the basic concepts of being a Soul Reaper. Now, this arc is great. It's a nice, it's not good, it's not bad, it's a basic setup arc, so the first arc is good. But next arc, the Soul Society arc is about saving Rukia. Now, the bit of the problem with Bleach, the arcs don't connect very well. They do connect like they tie into each other organically, but each arc has a completely separate villain. It's not like with Naruto, where you have Vyakoski, had Vyakoski, and it's not like with One Piece, where it flows very well. It's kind of like, okay, we have our story for this arc. Okay, here's a little tie-in. Here's our brand new story. Completely unconnected. But at least in something like One Piece, where there's a different villain every arc, there'd still be overarching goal of becoming a pirate king and taking down the enemy. In this, there is no overarching goal. Which is a major flaw, in my opinion. That Ichigo does not have a goal, but theory can get pretty confusing at times. I mean, they're kind of like, well, what, what did this have to do with Ichigo, guy? So, what I want to talk about is, of course, uh, the, the way the arcs play out. All right. So, after that, there'll be a wrong car arc and the fake Karakura arc. The fake Katakura and Aranka arc do tie in to get together. So I gotta give them credit. That is a good arc. Now, the Fulgrim arc is, is not a good arc. I'm gonna say that now. What is it? It is not very good. And then there's the Thousand Year Blood War arc, which I will talk with is decent. It has a lot of flaws, and critically, I'm sorry. I know that behind the scenes stuff was going on. It ends. Very shittily. Shittily even a word, I don't know. But it ends very badly, alright? The ending is shit. And even though Kubo's not to blame for that, there is a flaw in the theory. Now, now that I've kind of gone over the arts and talked about how they're semi-organic, I want to talk of the transition between arts. I want to talk about the fights. The fights in Bleach are amazing. The manga has some of the greatest fight scene artwork I've ever seen, besides for one flaw I will talk about later. Another thing that is great is the anime animation. Both have a great fight, and both live up to the same standard, which is rare. Like in Naruto and One Piece cases, the manga normally surpasses the anime in, in almost every regard, even for the fight. The fights are normally better in the manga. They're really better looking, more drawn out, easier to follow, the animation better, but in this case, no. 
They're equal, which is an amazing thing to be able to say. Now, I want to talk about about the art. Okay? In the manga, Kaite Kubo, halfway through the series, which is a major flaw, stopped drawing art in the background. Which I am not a fan of. I am not a fan of the fact that Kubo stopped drawing art. He stops his drawing in background. So there are scenes that are get to attention, but they're just the get to attention. They're just that's all they are. They're just get to attention. So there's no background, so they really take you out of the story, and that is a major flaw in my opinion. Now, how do I say this? All right, it, Blake is amazing with an amazing cast of characters. Each character has unique abilities and unique appearance and a unique personality. Unlike, very similarly to One Piece, every character is different. Unlike Naruto, where, where they're just in, and, and but anybody can, like, anyone can do it theoretically in something like Naruto. It's not a theory like that. It's not like how anybody can theoretically do Naruto's signature attack. No one else in Bleak can do Get to Attention. No one else can, can use Sembo and Zakura Kameyoshi. No one else can use Hirimaru. No one else can use Rukia Zanpakuto Kodeyashi Hanyuki. Each of Zanpakuto is unique to its master and can only be wielded by its master and has a unique ability and a unique design. Every Bankai looks different, every Bankai is different, and it's very interesting. They're all really complex and well thought out ability. Kubo also makes a great effort to keep all the characters relevant. Even in the final arc, when Chad didn't do anything, Kubo still made sure Chad showed up. Characters are rarely forgotten about entirely, which I love. There is a sense of make a character important for an arc, but when they're no longer needed, forget about them. No. Kubo does not do that, and I am very grateful that he doesn't do that. He's not like Kishi and Tor Kishi Moto and Toriyama. So props to Kubo for that. Props to you, Kubo. Now it's time to talk about some of the flaws of the theory. As I mentioned earlier, there are no backgrounds. Kubo also has a tendency for assholes. Let's talk about some of them. Final guess the potential. That baby. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't been the villain. For years now. He's been the villain for years. And you want to know what happened, guys? You want to know what happened? He made Aizen too strong. Kubo made Aizen too strong. So he needed to come up with a way for Ichigo to beat him. So Ichigo's dad introduced him to something called Final Gestuga. Now, mind you, Ichigo should not even know Final Gestuga existed. See, there's no way he could have used it. There's no, and it's, it's like a second Bankai. And to all, and it's like, there's so many unanswered questions about it. Do all Soul Reapers, do all Shinigami have a stack, have a third release that we don't know about? There's Shinigami the Steel for. There's the first release of Shikai and your Bankai. Do, can, 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 can Byakuto and Rukia? Do something like Final Guest to go? We don't know. It's never explained. Kubo just reached up his ass and pulled really hard. And he pulled out this information about this attack called Final Guest to go. And Ichigo just like Final Guest to go to Aizen, takes him out, and it's never mentioned again. Ichigo losing his power is mentioned, but Final Guest to go is never mentioned. And this is a major problem Kubo had when he sets up a major antagonist. He has a hard time defeating said major antagonist, and he normally ends up resorting to ass pull. Dong Ichigo spent like what, 22 hours? Or something? He spent like like two or like a couple of months, like 122 hours, like a couple of months in the Dong guy, in the Dong guy training. Master Final Gestuga came out, kicked eyes in the ass via his Deus Ex Machina, and that was it. It was over. Then we went on to the 
thousand year blood war arc later on, where the major villain loses to a silver arrowhead. A silver king arrowhead. I mean, can you explain that to me? A silver arrowhead? How did he lose to a silver arrowhead? Sorry, don't talk to you about that. But yeah, Bleach has a lot of assholes in it. And those are just some of them. There are a lot of things that are contrived and overly convenient. But overall, even like, a lot of the time, yes, in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, it wasn't good. But Kubo was being rushed by Shonen Jump. The rest of the time, like... Don Gaichigo is a tremendous asshole and really upsetting, but he's also really freaking cool. The way he just breaks Tato 90, he's just like, bitch, no. Like, Don Gaichigo is really epic. So I think that is a, is a major thing Blaze has going for it. Even when it's an asshole, it's really good. It's also a very interesting world. The lore of the Skull Society is amazing. The lore of the Captains is amazing. The lore of the Sarate is amazing. There's a ton of lore and artifacts and interesting people and interesting ability. Cheeto is like magic or sorcery. It's very interesting. I want to know more about Cheeto and Hado and all these things. And Bakudo. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff in Bleach. But there are also other things, like Kubo, okay, Kubo started a romance plot, he did, where Orihime being in love with Ichigo. And normally, in a shonen series, a shonen author would develop it. Look at Kishimoto Naruto, he developed his pairing, to a degree, well, that's debatable, but that's not what the theory is about. The point is, is that Kubo started the romance plot line, and he didn't develop it, and that really pissed me off. I, I am fine. I don't support it, but I'm fine with, Ichi, with Ichigo being with Orihime. But I'm not fine with or Ichigo suddenly, with Kubo skipping ahead 10 years, and Ichigo suddenly loving Orihime for no reason. Just loving her. Like, we don't know how it happened. And that pisses me the hell off. Alright, if we're not getting Naruto, if Naruto and Hinata were just friends, none of the romantic Naruhina moments, none of that happened, the last never happened, and at the end they have a kid. Like, all we know about Hinata and Naruto's relationship is that they go on missions together, and Hinata's a supporting character, and they're friends, but Hinata has had a crush on her, on Naruto at all. So if not that Naruto and Hinata were friends, and just friends, none of those moments happened, but not to still had a crush on Naruto. They were friends for the 99 chapter. Skip ahead 10 years to marry. With no explanation. No, not cool. Like, if you're going to start a romance plot line, Kubo, you need to finish it. Even Kinshi, as I compared it to before, who had to, who got gone, a romance in Naruto was written pretty damn badly. Even then, even then, he still put forward the effort. Kubo put forward no effort to make a romance make sense. And it's not cool. There are also, as with any long warning theory, characters that you're not going to like. And when you don't like them, you're probably going to end up hating them. Like despising them. You have to put up with them so damn much. It's incredibly annoying. I don't like Orahime. Alright? And there were times where I was like, I don't want to read this chapter because I don't want to put up with more Orahime. But you need to because of how long it is. It's not like a short little series like Full Monopoly, where if you don't like somebody, you can just put up with it because it's short. No! In this, you can't just put up with it. It's incredibly difficult to put up with them. And, that's another downside, but overall, Blaze is a really good theory. It has a great cast of characters, it has great fighting, interesting abilities, and interesting lore. While there are a lot of negatives to it, and it is by no means a perfect theory, I feel, if I honestly, also the pacing, the pacing of Blaze is great. 
up until the end of the series, the painting is consistent and good. But honestly, if I had to rate Blink, I would give it a 7 out of 10. I feel that is fair because it didn't. Okay, the first, let me explain my reasoning. The, the soul, the substitution of Gami arc, all the way to the arc, fake Katakura arc, is all really good content. Alright, it's all really good. The full break arc is not very good. It falls off there. Then most of the Thousand Year Blood War arc is pretty damn good. Then the ending happens. But Kubo being rushed by Jump and that was only like 15 chapters that were really rushed. Out of like over a hundred, there was a five thousand year blood war arc. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my review. I give Blake a seven. If you enjoyed the review, leave it a like, subscribe for more videos. It's a one piece nation. Signing out. Have a great day, guys.